first reading in this Holy Week series throughout this week comes from Luke's Gospel, chapter 19, just verses 41 to 44. As he approached Jerusalem and saw the city, he wept over it and said, If you, even you, had only known on this day what would bring you peace, but now it is hidden from your eyes. The days will come upon you when your enemies will build an embankment against you and encircle you and hem you in on every side. They will dash you to the ground, you and the children within your walls. They will not leave one stone on another because you did not recognize the time of God's coming to you. One of the benefits of staying home is that it's certainly given me an opportunity to explore the area where I live. This is the edge of Dawson Park, just a 10 minute walk from where I live. And actually getting out and about in these days has been a blessing to discover some of the paths and parks and so on that often I don't have time to find. This is a view out over the west of the city, in case you're not familiar with it. Annie's Land's behind me, and then it stretches over Jordan Hill, Clyde Bank, all the way out to the west. As Jesus approached Jerusalem, coming down the Mount of Olives, there's a spectacular view of the city of Jerusalem. It's one of the most beautiful views in Jerusalem, one of the first places that tour buses of pilgrims are taken to go and see the city. In Jesus' day, as he came in, it would have been no less spectacular. I had a little look yesterday on some of the live cams that you can access around the world, and you can see into the beating hearts of some of the major cities in the world. And yet, as I looked at live cams around the world yesterday, all these busy, bustling cities were quiet. New York, Rome, Venice. I had a look in Jerusalem and the, the Wailing Wall, that most iconic landmark of the city. There was only one man there praying. Normally it's teeming with people. Jesus came into a bustling city. Crowds of pilgrims making their way to Jerusalem because of the Passover festival that was about to begin. A busy, bustling city. And yet, as Jesus came down with these crowds shouting and singing and welcoming him and hailing him as their king, we're told that he paused at some point and he looked over the city and he wept. He wept because he knew what was coming. In AD 70, Jerusalem was sacked destroyed, put to the sword. The Jewish historian Josephus describes the scene in these rather grim words. <clears throat> As the legions charged in, neither persuasion nor threat could check their impetuosity. Passion alone was in command. Crowded together around the entrances, many were trampled by their friends. Many fell among the still hot and smoking ruins of the colonnades and died as miserably as they were defeated. As they neared the sanctuary, they pretended not even to hear Caesar's commands and urged the men in front to throw in more firebrands. The partisans were no longer in a position to help. Everywhere was slaughter and flight. Most of the victims were peaceful citizens, weak and unarmed, butchered wherever they were caught. Round the altar, the heaps of corpses grew higher and higher, while down the sanctuary steps poured a river of blood, and the bodies of those killed at the top slithered to the bottom. A gruesome, chilling description of how Jerusalem met its end just a few decades after Jesus was crucified there. Jesus knew what was coming to the city, and he wept for a city that despite its business and busyness, had no idea what was coming. Of course, had they known, had they recognized in him the one who had come to seek and to save the lost, they might have turned to him instead of turning against him. 
as Jesus knew they would, despite their welcoming praises on Palm Sunday. God knows and sees what is coming. The current situation which the world is facing is no surprise to God. As Jesus wept over Jerusalem, I'm sure he weeps over the cities of this world who are experiencing now their anxiety, stress, loss, and grief. The frustration which Jesus experienced and expressed in that prayer over Jerusalem as he wept was that the people had not recognized the time of God's coming. If they had, they might have come to him and found hope and meaning and purpose instead of their partisan struggle against the Roman Empire. They might have had a real future instead of a temporary one, which is what so much of us or so many of us seek in this world. All of the cities in the world are quiet now. The people mostly indoors. No one saw this coming. Except God, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, who weeps for those in distress, who are bereaved and grieving. And still he longs for the cities of the world to come to him, to trust in him, to believe that he alone is the one who can shepherd us through every season, whether of plenty or of want, and give to us real hope and purpose. Beyond this time and season, there will again be fresh hope and purpose in our lives. But only for this life. It's in Jesus alone, who weeps that we might know who he is, that we find true meaning and purpose and salvation and peace. Let's pray. Loving Father, we thank you for your grace, your courage, and your strength in every season and time. Lord, we pray for this city and for all the cities of the world suddenly fallen silent as people withdraw out of concern or anxiety or even fear before the spread of this disease. Loving Father, we pray that in this time of reflection and withdrawal, that you will cause many people in the cities to consider again where certainty and hope, peace, life, a future come from. Lord, we pray that in our own city you would be at work in the many stories being told and unfolding in the lives of people as they face a different reality. We pray that you give us courage and faith to fix our eyes upon you, to lift up our eyes, not just to but beyond the hills, to know the one from whom our strength comes. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.